Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. We are joined once again by the dynamic duo from One Tree Yoga today, talking all things yoga from their classes, the knowledge behind it, the benefits of it, and so much more. Welcome back today. How are you? Doing good. Thanks. Would you mind introducing yourself? Tell us a little bit about One Tree Yoga and what you do before we begin. Yeah, uh, I'm Gabe Hop. I'm half of the dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> One Tree Yoga is uh, a yoga studio in Omaha, Nebraska. We've been in business for over 20 years. Um, Allison and I have been business owners for coming up on five years. And we have two locations in Omaha. We're also um, on Zoom for almost all of our classes. We have a robust YouTube presence as well. And you can find us on all the social medias. It's One Tree Yoga. That's O N E. T-R-E-E yoga, and you can find us at OneTreeYoga.com. Perfect. And Allison? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Allison, the second half of the duo. Yeah, Gabe, <laughs> Gabe pretty much covered it. We, you know, our website is probably the best place to go um, for information on classes and styles of classes. So I would always start there. Uh, but like Gabe said, um, our YouTube channel is another great place too, if you're not able to join us either in person or on Zoom for a class definitely go to YouTube. Great. And what did you have in mind for us today? Um, I know we're going to open up the phone lines momentarily. To, uh, if anyone has any questions, reach out to you. Uh, feel free. They could do so here at the new line at uh, 631-205-6605. That's 631-205-6605. In the meantime, ladies, what is on tap for today? I'm sorry I didn't get the notes yet. <laughs> it's all good. All good. We thought uh, it would be fun to talk about uh, being being owners of a yoga business, like how it's different from you know being a, being a, an owner of any other type of business, and uh, yeah, what it's like to be in the business of yoga. Oh, go for it! I'm curious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's um like Gabe sort of alluded to. It's a, uh, I think you know, there's sort of this category of being a small business owner in general is its own sort of special thing, and I think. You have plenty of guests on on your podcast that that talk about their different small businesses, but that that owning a yoga business is sort of its own special beast, if you will, um, good and bad. Gabe and I both, like like she said earlier, we've been owners now almost five years, but before that, we have both been teaching yoga for well over a decade. I think I'm coming up on my 13th year of teaching. I've been doing yoga since I was in high school, and so. I've been involved mm-hmm. and, and sort of a part of the yoga studio, One Tree specifically, community for over 20 years. And both of us were also managers before we were studio owners. And so we sort of knew the ins and outs pretty well. And so when it was sort of brought to us, like, hey, do you want to take this studio over? At first, we were like, nope. <laughs> we are, uh, <laughs> we're a little reluctant because because we knew, we knew the challenges, we knew that you know, like it's so much more than just teaching a good yoga class, which is what we both love doing teaching. And so we were a little, we were a little bit reluctant. And then I think ultimately sort of decided that we knew this business as well as anybody and that, you know, we were going to give it a go. And I'm, I'm grateful we did. I think we both would say, although there has been challenges, we'll talk about COVID and all of that, but um, it's been in many ways more rewarding than either of us thought for sure. I would like to also add that um, when we were approached about taking over the business, we were both like very newly pregnant, me with my first, (laughs) Allison with her second. And that just threw, you know, a wrench in the process because um, ultimately what happened is we took over the business when we, when we had three month olds. (laughs) So, Uh you know, anyone who's ever been a mom, you know what that's like, (laughs) little little intense but um yeah yeah, ultimately like Allison said so for the best like we both love one tree yoga so much and we both just want to see it succeed and I think that's that's why um that's that's why we are like really good at this at this job because we like really really are passionate about one tree yoga and what we do oh yeah Gabe and I are also people and I'm sure many can relate that's like if we're going to do something we want to do it really well and 
you know, mm-hmm. be really successful. And there of course was, you know, stuff that we were like, God, like, I don't know if, if we're going to be good at that or how's it going to go. And, and so I think that maybe contributed. And so I, I would say like my best advice to anybody, whether it's a yoga studio or any business is, is that, you know, once you kind of put your mind to it, I think that kind of sets the stage that like, we're going to make this happen. And that we don't have to be good at every little thing. Like we have an accountant who handles accounting and like we have a social media person who helps us with that. Like that's not necessarily our specialties. And so like we can focus more on the things that like we're actually, you know, trained and equipped to, to focus on. And I think that that's huge too. It's like, you don't have to do every little thing. And I think that was a lesson we kind of had to learn as we, as we went on. So you kind of we, have to also give away power in a sense, right? Because that's got to be hard yeah, because you're your own brand, your own sure, company, and then sure. everyone you hire, I don't know. I don't know my own business either. So I don't know this, but you have to feel uh, trustworthy to hire people totally. that represent you and are going to, you know, whether it's social media, do, you know, what you would like and how you want your brand represented. That's got to be scary to kind of let go of the reins. But at the same time, in order to run a business, you need to have that trust in, in people. It's true. So when we took over, we really did every single thing. You know, (laughs) Allison and I are pretty conservative and we like, in terms of, you know, being business owners, like Mm -hmm. we wanted to, you know, do as much as we could to, to like save as much money as we could. And, um, we did a really good job of delegating, you know, so that, that we had duties that we were both into and interested in, but ultimately like, you know, I used to do the social media. I hit a wall after a couple of years, like (laughs) this is actually not my specialty. Yeah. (laughs) And, um, I just want to give a shout out to our social media gal, Hannah, she came through our, um, teacher training program and she, you know, so she spent a year really like involved in one tree yoga Mm -hmm. Um, and she, this is her specialty. She's like super good at knowing how to market. And so, um, you know, the stars aligned. And at the time that it was like, I was at the end of my, you know, capabilities, she stepped in and she has just been amazing at like matching our voice, you know, knowing, knowing how to represent one tree yoga. Um, we also, we hired a photographer who is basically like our in-house photographer. He's done all of our photography for the last, you know, several years, but he takes these incredible photos of, of our teachers and like that, you know, that combined with the social media just makes this, um, really awesome marketing, uh, dynamic. And now speaking of, you guys have been doing this for over, was it almost 30 years, right? I hate to say I'm not going to age you, but 20 something years, right? As, yeah. Uh, I mean, years. independently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I'm, just to assume, so you both were in, instructors, I'm assuming before this. Is that true? And yeah. how do you bring, and then how do you work together now with your friend and the instructor? And you got, you know, is there any headbutting involved in your business? Could you share that? <laughs> Sure. I mean, great question. yeah, so Gabe, Gabe, it is a great question. Gabe and I, like you said, we were both students first. We practiced yoga for a long time together and with, you know, a lot of the people at the studio and then became teachers for many years and then managers and then owners. So yeah, like it was for me personally, I could, you know, can only speak for myself, but it was a big learning curve of like, you know, going from, uh, you know, sometimes that student to teacher relationship or that colleague relationship to like, now I'm your boss. And so there was definitely a a learning curve involved. I think uh, like Gabe was talking about with our social media gal, Mm -hmm. it's like, we've really learned that, that it kind of just the whole culture of the studio just it just goes better if everybody's kind of bought in to like us as teachers, kind of the way we see the vision of the business and the way we teach and the way we, you know, sort of what we want to put out there. If everyone like respects and buys into that and we all kind of like can learn from each other, I think it's, it's just kind of gone better. And so we've definitely gone through our ebbs and flows and we've learned hard lessons and we've, you know, gotten burnt before and, you know, all these things to kind of get to the point where I feel like we really have such a great solid group with us that, you know, we all are kind of on the same team, which feels really nice. Got it. By the way, I just got your notes, so I apologize. They did send them, but late. Great. So I'm not sure where we're going to pick up from. I'll let you guys keep going. Yeah. Yeah. The post COVID era. I mean, there's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'll I'll follow the lead after you guys go for the next subject. (laughs) Well, let's see. I just want to say, um, 
of like Allison and I working together as business owners. We, I think we've been really lucky and, and we, we sort of set the tone when we came in and we said, you know, like, it's possible that we won't agree on everything. And it's possible that, you know, maybe we will disagree on something so much that we'll have to get outside help. But like, True. ultimately, she and I are on the same page 99% of the time, because we have been part of one Trioga for so long, because we've like, taught and managed and done teacher training together. You know, we just like, we kind of know how this works. And, um, and that the, the other 1% where one of us feels more strongly than the other, it's usually okay to just say like, okay, we'll go with what you, you know, you have a stronger mm-hmm. feeling. So let's do what you think. And the next time, maybe I'll have a stronger feeling. Uh, it's a really, we've been really lucky in that way. Yeah, I think business partnership, I think both of us, part of our reluctancy was that it gets such a bad rap, right? It's like, you hear these horror stories of, you know, business partners and like drama and breaking up and the company, you know, all this and we were both kind of like, God, like we were, you know, I already knew I worked so well with Gabe. Like we had been doing teacher training together for several years. We both felt confident in that, but I think we both were kind of like, man, like what, you know, we don't want that to happen. And so I think for us, the key has been, thankfully we are almost always on the same page, but that we're really communicative and we're really, we have a call coming in, I believe. Hi, welcome to the show. You're live on the line. Who's this? Hi, my name is Veronica. I just have a quick question. Great. Sure, Great. Just to confirm, you're live on uh, on the podcast, so you are aware, but you are live here with the ladies from One Tree Yoga. Go ahead, ask anything. Hi. So I've never really done yoga before, and I was wondering, um, my hamstrings, I'm trying to get a little bit more flexible. I was wondering if there was any, like, beginner-friendly exercises I could do. Go ahead. Do you want to answer, Gabe, mm-hmm. or I can? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um if you want to stretch your hamstrings, you are going to work on straightening your legs. Yeah. So beginner friendly ways to do that um, are laying down with your legs straight up in the air. Um, you can interlace your hands behind one of your legs with it straight up in the air and take the other one down towards the floor or, or bend the other knee and set the foot on the floor. That's kind of our go to hamstring mm-hmm. stretch. Um, let's see, another thing you could do would be to lay down with your legs up against a wall. So you create like a 90 degree angle, um, with your legs up the wall. And that's a great way to stretch your hamstrings. You might not be able to get your legs all the way to the wall. You might need to be further away from the wall, but that way you can spend time there. You can spend two minutes, five minutes there, really give your hamstrings the the chance to loosen. I would add one more thing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Let me add one more thing to that too, Veronica. I think sort of like we've, we've talked about in other episodes that, you know, the hamstrings and everything in the body is so connected that often, you know, working with the hips, for example, is another great way that will sort of like get into the hamstrings as well. So along with what Gabe said, um, laying on your back legs up the wall or one leg in the air is, is anything you could do to kind of stretch the hips is another kind of gateway in. So, you know, on your back doing like a simple figure four stretch or, um, you know, seated, cross-legged even to start just ways that you can open up those hips. Um, that's different than how you might sit, let's say at like an office chair, um, I think will also help because the hips and hamstrings, it's also closely connected. Oh, wow. Thank you guys so much. It's been so helpful. You're, You're welcome. So welcome. You're so welcome. You have a great day. And if you want to reach out, let's just remind her of the website and contact information. Yeah, so our website is onetreeyoga.com and you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at onetreeyoga.com. Happy to answer any other questions you might have or join us join us online for class sometime. Perfect. What about animals? Can they do yoga? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down for dog. There's no, cow. Puppies, I love, I love cats. Face. I love cats. Yeah. I love cats. <laughs> I passed in September, so I'm sorry. I got happy to see your cat. For those of you uh, live on the podcast, we're on the Zoom cast where I get to see. Um, uh, what's your cat's name? Moose. Moose. Oh my God. Does it look yeah. like a moose? Looks like, and cats talk about flexibility. Uh, oh, yeah. They just have this agility and flexibility. <laughs> and um, yeah, I feel like cats would be like the perfect like rep animal to represent yoga. Like they're just so flexible. They're so bendy. They're so bendy. Lying. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's right. been the fun part about Zoom is like 
getting to see everybody set up at home and like their well, animals and their children, like yeah. all doing the class with. So it's kind of, fun. well, speaking of that was one of the things on the sheet about what if you're not flexible, can you do yoga? And you know, of course you should do yoga if you're you not flexible. You should. <laughs> but some of those way, basic strategies you were just telling us about, right? Yep. So it could happen. It just takes time. But, you know, some people are genetically gifted. They can be really flexible. Not everybody's meant to be that flexible, but good flexibility is, it's a good thing to just start off slow. Absolutely. And that's, I think what we try to drill home is that I think what you see out there is so not attainable for most people and we want yoga to be accessible. And so we, you know, try to really teach it in a way that's accessible. We use a lot of props so that really anybody can come in off the street and like we can make it work for them. And that's how it should be, in my opinion. So we also teach a, like a functional amount of flexibility, yes. right? Like we're not teaching anybody to be a trapeze artist. We're teaching you to like have comfort in your body for your you know daily life. And uh, we also do a ton of strengthening um, with our flexibility work as well. So really like balancing the strength mm -hmm. and flexibility is the key to help healthy, happy body. Got it. And also as owners of um, a yoga studio, which you guys, you've been together for a little while, um, give and take compromise. Um, I got to ask personally, is there ever times where you really butt heads? And that's <laughs> how does that work? Because I had I had a good friend who owns a hair salon, her and a part and they butted heads. So but they were such good friends. Then they opened the business together and they could not do it. So one of them had to sell to the other. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you guys handle that? I mean, we really like Gabe said earlier, we there's definitely been times I can sort of think off the top of my head that we maybe haven't agreed, but typically it's like one of us just maybe has a stronger feeling about it than the other. And we kind of tend to just be like, all right, Allison, you seem to be like more, you know, more into this. So let's just go with that. It's cool. Um, I don't know. I think anytime there has been disagreement, we just sort of talk about it. And usually it's like, oh, I didn't think about that perspective, Gabe. Like, interesting. That sort of shifts my mindset a little bit. Um, so I feel like we're lucky in that sense. But I also think we, we're we very much alike in a lot of ways in terms of how we sort of see yoga and see the studio. But we're, mm -hmm. but we're also very different in, in a way that really balances each other well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are things that, like, I'm just more naturally inclined towards and, and same with Gabe. And so it's sort of just, it, it's a nice mesh because it tends to be some of the things that I am like not great at. Gabe is really good at. And so it, it just sort of works out well. I think we, we've always worked well together and, and that, that gave us confidence. Like, okay, we can do this as business owners. Like we've, we've worked together for a long time. Like luckily we're both yogis. And so we're both inclined to like, contemplation mm -hmm. and like taking time to let things settle and not reacting. And so that is like, I think that goes a long it way helps. for, yeah. uh, not like we've yet to have a knockdown drag out knock on wood, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> because I think, you know, our yogi, our yogi superpowers kick in and we, uh, we chill yeah. if we get, you know, yeah. Yeah, like I'm going to just step away <laughs> from my phone and we'll, we'll revisit it yeah. later. And we, we usually know when the other one is sort of in that space and then we're just like, yep, we'll talk about it later. It's cool. Beautiful. We're also, you know, like we're also stay at home moms in addition to doing, you know, our yoga business. And so like Alton said, like, you know, it's not usually like one of us needs to run and do something with a kid or we're, you know, we're pulling away from our phones. Like um, we try to like have the right balance of communication and stepping away and, you know, mm -hmm. somehow make it all work. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, we still have six minutes left in the show. Seven. What else would you like to share? Um, I know, again, the phone lines are open. If someone does want to call, they can still ask any questions. Uh, again, that's six, uh, 631 area code uh, six, uh, 205 60 655 Please give us a call in the meantime. And uh, if you have any questions, we're here. Hi. Hello? Hello? Fake out. Hi. Welcome to the show. I heard you. All right. We lost them. Please yeah, feel free to call back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, well, if they call back, we can we can answer, but it's probably worth discussing because I think most small businesses had to deal with this, most businesses with, with COVID and sort of how that shifted our business in in I think some great ways and in maybe some ways that have been really challenging. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think one of the biggest changes that's probably been for the better is it sort of forced us into this whole online platform. 
Um, I, you know, it's something we had sort of talked about, like, like, we should have a YouTube channel or we should have some online classes, but it felt like, ah, oh, we have too much going on. We don't have time for that. And so COVID hit and suddenly we had to completely redo our entire model of business. It was like, okay, in person isn't a thing anymore. Um, use a whole new skill set to now teach to a camera versus people in a room, bodies that we see. And so um, it kind of forced us into that. And obviously I think COVID changed that for all businesses, many businesses, like a lot more things happening online and not always needing to be in person. And while that changes the dynamic, I think the cool part is we're able to sort of be out there for so many more people. Um, and we've also been able to like hire some teachers back who have moved out of state. Now they can teach for us on Zoom. And so um, while we all like to like joke about how Zoom, Zoom is a pain in our butt, I think it, it really has been um, a blessing in disguise that we've sort of been able to, to kind of go into that online world when we probably wouldn't have made it a priority before. Right. Well, it also just meant that we could stay open as a business, you know, like everyone was having to shut down and we were able to say like, okay, like we can't meet physically, but we can provide you with class, you know, we can still do class every day. And everyone was at home with nothing to do. So like, awesome, we could do yoga every day. Um, and so awesome. in, yeah, in that way, we were able to keep, you know, a lot of our membership, a lot of um, people still practicing yoga throughout the entirety of the pandemic. Got it. And also, um, trying to have my trouble with the phone line here. Hello, hello, are you there? Nope, the phone rang, r line rang again, but I'm not hearing them. So try back if you can, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what else, ladies, while we figure this out, hopefully? Come on. Hello, hello. Let's Hi. Hi. Hey, I hear you now. Yes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what's what's your name? Hi. Um, my name is Andrea, and I just had a question. Sure, go ahead. You're live on the line. Just to remind you, One True Yoga here with the ladies. Please ask any questions for Gabe and Allison you have. Thank you. Well, I just had a, a emergency C-section um, about three months ago, and they gave me an epidural. Um, but I find, like, after my epidural um, was done, like, the after effects, it still kind of hurts where it was. And I was wondering, is, like, yoga safe to do, even though my back hurts? It's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, Gabe and I would probably always preface this by saying, like, we're not doctors. And so, you know, you should probably consult with your doctor. But I do okay. think it really does depend on what kind of yoga. I think there are definitely certain styles of yoga. I'm thinking, of course, much more slow and low to the ground and really chill that that you'd probably be able to ease your way into if you really listen to your body. And, you know, my rule of thumb is like, if something hurts or doesn't feel right, like, let's let's adjust so that you're not in pain. Um, but I think if you if you did some stuff really slowly and mindfully, I think it could probably be beneficial. Um, I would probably stay away from, you know, faster moving, really, you know, quick movement kind of classes until you, you maybe have less pain. But I, I definitely think it's, it would be something worth sort of exploring if, if it feels okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. For yeah. It's hard, man, to, you know, C-sections and epidurals. It's all rough. Yeah. <laughs> it's no joke. <laughs> it's a tough recovery. Yeah. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. yeah. Good luck you and uh, if you want to reach out uh remind us how we can do so uh yeah so you can check us out on our website one .com, or email us info at one um we've got youtube channel one tree yoga uh we're also on instagram and facebook so you can find us on social media as well Awesome. And how did you want to leave off for today's show? I know we started talking mostly about you as business owners and the difference between being the yoga teacher, owning your own studio, the lot that goes into it. Um, what did you want to leave us with? I think it's worth saying that we um, are, you know, we're kind of like lifelong learners, mm -hmm. Allison and I, and we, you know, yoga is a discipline that you learn and, and just like, going taking the leap from you know student to teacher from teacher to teacher trainer from you know teacher trainer to studio owner it's it's really about being willing to learn and being open to the process and uh and yeah 
All right. Well, thank yeah, you guys again for learning. being here. Thank you to for our callers again for also reaching out. And again, go to the website, One Tree Yoga, check out the YouTube channel and get started. And uh, slowly but surely start stretching. Good one. I forgot her name. We'll call first. But yeah, we all have to start stretching. I'm still waiting on right. this recovery from my broken foot. And I realized the other day I had not stretched in three weeks. So mm. my, still my have the hamstring. Boots? Yeah. So I go to the doctor wow. this Friday. So, but okay, like I haven't soon. stretched. I'm so scared yeah. to move the foot bone, which yeah, is connected sure. to the hamstring muscle. Sure. And I'm like, it oh, is, so yeah. I, yeah, and it's getting all flabby looking. You know how that works. So <laughs> I got to start. <laughs> Thank you again, ladies. Have yes. a great day. And to everyone, Thank we appreciate you. you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network.